All right, so the recording stopped. I'll just recap very briefly. We're talking about a rectangle. It's a quadrilateral with four right angles. It does qualify as a parallelogram because the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, so the opposite sides are parallel. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent. And here, we're going to prove that theorem. So we have rectangle ABCD. I have one diagonal AC, another diagonal BD, and we want to prove that they're congruent using triangles. Okay, yes. Okay, so what I want to do is this. Here I have one triangle. Okay? I want to prove that that entire triangle um, is congruent to the opposite triangle. And I have to use that triangle because that's the one that you know includes the entire side. And the other triangle is this. Okay, do you see the two triangles now? They're sort of like overlapping. Um, now, what do I know? By the virtue of the fact that it's a rectangle, I know that this entire angle and this entire angle are what? 90 degrees, right? Because, uh, well, I know that they're right angles. So I say angle ADC and angle BCD are right angles. Why do I know this? Definition of a rectangle. Now, so here one um, angle of the triangle is congruent. So that's my A right there. Now I need a couple of S's or A's. Okay, a few more. Well, um, what do I know about AD and BC? Oh, wait a minute. You know what? Before I go there, sorry, I have to establish that they're congruent. So now I say angle ADC is congruent to angle BCD because all right angles are congruent. Now, that's my A. All right. So next I can say AD is congruent to BC. Why are they congruent? What type of shape is ABCD? A rectangle. And because it's a rectangle, it's also a what? A parallelogram. And in a parallelogram, what do we know about opposite sides? They're congruent. So here the reason is that if you have a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So number five leads us to what? What else do we need? We have an S here. What else do we know? DC is congruent to DC. Why? Reflexive. That's another side. Because AB is not part of any of the rect any of the triangles. So now what do I have? I have a side, an angle, and a side. So the two triangles are congruent by what? SAS. So this is tri uh, triangle ADC is congruent to triangle BCD. Um, SAS congruence. And then number seven, now that the two triangles are congruent, anything and everything is congruent by CPCTC. So I say AC is congruent to BD. BD, CPCTC, and we're done. Okay? All right, so moving on. <clears throat> I'm told that ABCD is a rectangle, and I'm also told that AC is 30 minus X, so this is 30 minus X. And what's the other one? 
4x minus 60, this one. Right? So what do I know? So those are the two diagonals, and I know that the diagonals are congruent to each other. So I say 30x, a 30 minus x, is 4x minus 60. That means if I subtract, I'm sorry, if I add x, I get that 30 is equal to 5x minus 60, 90 is equal to 5x, and x is equal to 18. Okay? All right, what do we have here? I have that nr is 2x plus 10, so this whole thing is 2x plus 10, and NP, which is just this, is 2x minus 30. How are those two related? Riley? Exactly. 2 times NP is equal to NR. So 2 times 2x minus 30 is equal to NR, 2x plus 10. And I can be um, efficient in solving this. Rather than distribute and then divide and then blah, 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 I can just divide both sides of the equation by 2 right there. And that's a clever little thing that I can do to save time, right? So I get 2x minus 30 is equal to x plus 5. x is equal to 45. And, no, it's not. 35. Well, that's fine, but what I want is MP. This is what I want. How big is MP? Right, MP is the same as NP, which is 2x minus 30. So it's 2 times 35 minus 30, so MP is 40. Okay? All right, so take a look at this next one. Um, a, B, C, D is a rectangle. Find the values of X and Y. Now we're given information on angles, right? What do we know about angles of a rectangle? They're all 90. So this is 90, and all the other ones are 90. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do here. 4X plus 5 plus 9X plus 20 equal 90. So 13x plus, what is this, 25 equals 90. 13x is equal to 65. And x is equal to 5. Now let's see how much y equals. All right, so these two lines are parallel to each other, right? And this is a transversal, so these two angles are alternate interior angles, meaning y squared minus 1 equals 4y plus 4. y squared minus 4y minus 5 is equal to 0. I subtracted everything and I brought them over to the left side. Now, can I factor this? I get y minus 5, y plus 1. That means y is equal to 5 and y is equal to minus 1. Now, can y equals, e equal 5? That's fine because the values that we get when we plug them into the angles are fine. But what if we plug in y equals negative 1? Like in this one here, we get 0. There we get 0. So that doesn't work. All right? So the only answers we have are x equals 5, y equals 5. Yeah. Um, especially, yeah, I mean, especially if you get two and one of them is negative, it's a good idea to check. All right, this is a cool one. I like this one. We're given eight of these angles here, and we're given that angle one is 40. So this is 40. Okay? So angle one is 40. Which one can we find immediately, right off the bat? Six, 
six or two. Yeah, so both of them. So six and one are alternate interior angles, so that's 40. And how about two? 50 because they add up to 90 together. Okay? Where? Oh, oh, two. Uh, I went vertically. Some of my writing is going away, so angle six is supposed to be 40. All right. Now, what else can we find here? <coughs> so look at this. This is what I love about this problem. Um, what do I know about, okay, so this and this are congruent to each other, right? Because that's the property of rectangles. And now look at this. What do I have here? What type of triangle? Isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, if you have two equal sides, then the angles opposite to them, which are the base angles, are congruent. So angle 3 is also 50 degrees. Okay. So angle 4 then, right, because these two are 100, would be 80. And here, this one, right, angle 7 is how big? 100, because these two are a linear pair. Isn't that fun? And now look, angle 3 and angle 8 are alternate interior angles. So angle 8 is how big? 50. And what does that leave? Angle 5 is how big? 40. Okay? That was fun, yeah. All right. So next theorem. Huh? Because I had stopped it. Okay, so the next theorem says, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. This is the converse of the one before, and it's abbreviated as, if the di diagonals are congruent, then it's a rectangle. <clears throat> okay, so here it says, as a direct application of this, determine whether DFGH is a rectangle given each set of vertices. Now, when you have something like this, um, in this case, we're given the vertices, so if you if you plot it, there is really, you know, one way it's going to look. If you didn't have the vertices, remember that to label a parallelogram or any, any polygon, you start at one vertex, any vertex will do, and then you go in order, counter, I'm sorry, clockwise. All right, so this is D, and then the next one is F, then G, then H, all right? So now the diagonals are DG and FH. So what we have to do is we have to see um, if DG is congruent. So is DG congruent to FH? Okay? So first let's find DG. All right, so for DG, we're going to use this side, um, these two points, okay? And the distance formula, who remembers the distance formula? X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. So 4 minus negative 4 squared plus negative 2 minus negative 1 squared, 4 plus 4 is 8, squared is 64, plus 1, so dg is equal to the square root of 65. And now let's see what fh is equal to. For fh, we're going to use these two. So I say 2 minus 2 
2 minus negative 2 squared plus 2 minus negative 5 squared. For the first one, what do I have? 4 squared is 16 plus 49. So FH is the square root of 65. Uh. And this one, DG shouldn't have the, uh, the segment part. All right, because FH is congruent to DG, okay, therefore, this means therefore in math, all right, um, DFGH is a rectangle. That means therefore. All right? So that's section four. Um, this homework, see some of the, look at a lot of the fours I was writing for that one angle, like that was 40. Look, they're down there now. Isn't that funny? All right, so this is due um, tomorrow, Wednesday. Thank <clears throat> you.